Hi everyone, welcome back. Another glorious day in the Tetons. I'm uh, on week three of my no chemo, no treatment uh, break. Yay. I still have two more weeks, which is fabulous. Hmm. This morning I went for a hike. Uh, it was really wonderful. I saw five moose um, from far away, except for one scary incident <laughs> where I came around, like you can see the bushes behind me. So let's say I was like, it was pretty thick, dense, and I came out of them and there was a baby moose, right? How amazing, except where's the mother <laughs> so this beautiful baby and I'm talking like baby it could barely walk it might, it's got to be have just been born but it was there and I'm just looking around and I scooped up my dog because I was like where's mommy <laughs> thankfully we didn't see mommy we just hightailed it out of there and uh, safe for all of us mm. it was really glorious uh, today um, I'm still marveling at the uh, at the fact that I can just decide that I'm gonna stand up and go for a walk. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up and and go for a hike. Uh, it's crazy. It's kind of the um, the thing I was thinking about on my walk today is uh, the the agency over our own bodies. You know, the helplessness that it feels when you can't make that choice. When no matter, <laughs> no matter what you think, I would like to go for a walk, but you can't stand up or you can't put one foot in front of the other or you can't do it for very long or whatever. It's an amazing thing to be able to decide what you want to do with your body. The reason I was thinking about this is I, uh, as you guys all know, I have been uh, trying with all of my might to just pretend I don't have cancer, to give myself a break. And to be honest, it worked for a little bit. Uh, it worked so well that like every day it was kind of normal and I thought, wow, this is just amazing. You know, every day I've been doing stuff. And then one day, a couple of days ago, I got a phone call and it was from uh, my medical facility. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they have decided to not move forward with the trial drug uh, that I had gotten into. If you guys remember, uh, for the last couple of months, I've been talking about uh, um, I was able to get there's a new there's a new uh, chemo drug, uh, first one that's come out in so many years. Uh, Onvansertib is the name of it. Um, it's a very small trial, uh, but they've had. They've had lots of really good things come out of this trial, you know, the, um, tumors shrink and disappear and stuff. And I know it's a small trial and anyways, I got into the trial and then my medical facility needed to come up with an agreement with them because I, I'm basically, uh, I'm not in the trial per se with, uh, with them, but uh, they've given me permission to take the drug. So my medical facility needed to dispense it to me. And what, for whatever reason, they have not been able to come to an agreement. And so therefore it's not happening. And uh, well, obviously that uh, brought cancer back to the forefront. Uh, um, hard uh, because, you know, I, there's, they're not presenting a lot of other options, you know, uh, it's really hard when, when your, your oncologist or your team says you're doing really well, but 
we know that you still have cancer in you, but right now it's not moving. So let's just, just enjoy your life. And, and, and then when it starts to take over again, <laughs> we will we'll deal with it then. With what? I don't know. Because, you know, I had an allergic reaction to chemo. And anyways, there's just not a lot of... There's not a lot of next steps, and I think uh, in order to, for me, in order to continue fighting the best fight, is you just, you gotta have a little bit of hope, right? And, and that's what this trial drug gave to me, is it made me think that there was something uh, in the future, t uh, something new that I was gonna try, and something that might Life has been really, really normal here in uh, in the Tetons. It's been easy to forget for hours at a time that I have cancer. It's confusing too. The thing is that I just keep thinking about is like it's agency over our own bodies, right? And we as women, we do, we've dealt with this our whole lives because there's always someone telling you what you should dress like, what you should talk like, what you should act like, uh, how you should use your body, what you can do with your body, right? We've, we've dealt with this our whole lives. But with those things, you know, <laughs> you have... I feel like you have options. You can listen to people. I have people all the time, even on my YouTube videos, people comment and tell me that I, you know, I shouldn't swear. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, like I can do what I want. And that's really great when you can make those decisions, right? I can decide not to participate in the fantasy land of religious nutters and, and uh, do what I so choose to do with my body and my mind and my voice and, and dress however I want. And those are things that you can make decisions about, right? But when you, you go to a surgeon and you say, hey, look, you know, I'm willing to take the chance, cut it out. And they look at it and they look at the thing, they come back and say, ah, you know, it's not worth the risk to us to our facility, the liability, this or that, right? Or you say, hey, I'd like to try this new drug. And they say, yeah, you know. <sighs> you know, I have a friend that is younger than, than me. This young man has a wife and kids and he has the same disease I do, but he hasn't been able to find anyone. Every turn he goes to, they say, ah, the... You know the surgery's too risky. I don't think I don't think the benefits. You know you might get an extra year. Is it worth it? Uh, no, this pump doesn't work for you. No, every time he turns around, they say no, and and just like myself, he's like, but I would be willing to, I'd be willing to take those risks. That's my life. You know, I have a friend. By the way, on. Uh, Tuesday of this week, please take a moment and think positive thoughts for a woman. Her name is Kathleen. She has the same disease I do. She has different insurance. So not only has she heard from her medical facility that her doctors say, no, that's not going to work for you. No, you can't do that. She's had her insurance continually say, no, you don't qualify for this. No, you can't go talk to that person, right? <laughs> the helplessness. But she fought. She kept, oh, she found she found her own liver. They wouldn't do a resection. They wouldn't do a pump. They wouldn't do this or that. But her last hope was was a, a liver transplant. And she it's a beautiful story. She has a she has a friend from college that uh, that offered up her liver. And the day before she was supposed to uh, go in for uh, pre op uh, stuff, the insurance company said no. We don't think that it's worth the possibility of what? I don't know. <laughs> they did tell her though, hey, 
It's not that we won't pay for it. We will. We'll send you to a different facility, and you have to take a dead liver. You have to take a bad liver. Uh, we're willing to do that, but we're not willing to allow you to have this surgery with this beautiful, brand-new liver that someone's willing to give you because the risks, this, that. Can you imagine? <sighs> she fought, though. She fundraised. She advocated for herself, and... And now she's having the surgery. So on Tuesday of this week, please have send positive energy out into the world for Kathleen. Because if she, if the surgery is successful, she's going to come out the other side and she's going to be cancer free. And if that only lasts for three, four, five years, huh, that's what I'm struggling with these last couple of days is, is why isn't it my choice? I'm willing to, maybe that drug won't save me, but use my body for science. Maybe that surgery won't save me, but will you learn from it? Because we always say, right? We have to stay alive to keep up with the science. But if the people that are doing the science won't let you participate, how can we keep learning. It just feels so incredibly helpless to be told that, yeah, this might work, but you can't try it. And it's really hard to think about going back to chemo in two weeks and doing chemo every two weeks until it doesn't work. So at least there was some hope. I was trying something new. But as overwhelming as this has been, when I heard the news, I sat down. I allowed, I sat in it. I sat in it for a couple of hours. I asked my wife, just give me some time. Just let me... And and I'm not giving up. I'm going to start to make other plans. I'm going to start to look. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. But for right here, right now, I'm in the mountains and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed except for a potential drug that potentially could have helped save me I'm not allowed to take. I guess I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. I did get to see Moose today, and I did get to go for a walk, and I got to stretch my hike. When I got here, I mapped out a hike that by the end of the five weeks I wanted to be able to complete. In the course of the last three weeks, I have gotten halfway there, step by step. And that's what I'm working on wrapping my mind around, step by step. This is a little bump in the road. <sighs> All right. Thank you for listening. And don't forget on Tuesday, have positive thoughts for my friend Kathleen. Let's take all that energy in the world and send it to her so she can make it through that surgery and be here for a couple of more years with her beautiful daughters. Thanks for listening. <laughs>